Dantex here, quick video today breaking down the new official Anthem trailer that just dropped called Anthem Part 2 Endgame on PlayStation Korea's YouTube channel. I'm sure it's coming to the others soon. This video is breaking down everything in the trailer, including the difficulty being tuned, how to craft masterwork items and undertake legendary contracts. So let's get started. The opening of the video discusses the early game, the tutorial section. I've personally played through it and I'm surprised they kind of spoil it in the video but I won't do that for you. Aren't I a nice guy? <laughs> Just know that the opening section is pretty cool and nothing more needs to be said. Let's move on. Next we see a Luminary. These mechs function like a pseudo boss fight. They're hard hitting, take a lot of damage and rotate their attack patterns. Their legs are their weak point and this Luminary is legendary and therefore quite a bit tougher to beat than the regular or elite. The ranks also determine the enemy's difficulty as well as the difficulty you set before the mission so just keep that in mind. Make sure to bring fire or acid based skills to help you burn through that yellow health bar which represents armor. Here we see in this matchmaking power up screen, there is a vinyl on the Storm's helmet. Some people were thinking that vinyl decorations are limited to just the body, that is not the case. And this one is looking especially cool. What I've been dying to point out though, is the dragon scale material you can use for your javelin as seen on this interceptor. I think the gold finish was a nice touch. The medal does have a rare icon listed on it, so there is a possibility you'll need to unlock it with coins or shards. At this stage, it's unknown. Here we see a storm throwing a fireball, but the enemy Dominion soldier flies towards the screen once it's hit. I don't remember these kinds of physics in the game, I just remember the soldiers kind of exploding into pace when they're hit with this skill. So if they've turned up the physics engine, I'm on board because frankly throwing people around like ragdolls is hilarious. Now here is a huge change I want to discuss, the difficulty. If you will remember, Easy was a 0% increase of enemy damage and health, and Grandmaster 3 was a 3100% increase. Now, we can see that the normal is 0% now, the baseline, and Hard has been tuned to 52%. Grandmaster 1 is a 165% increase, Grandmaster 2 is a 430% increase, and Grandmaster 3 is 950% increase. This is no small nerf to enemy health and damage, this is actually pretty massive. Now Grandmaster 1 is around the same percentages as hard used to be and Grandmaster 3 is around 2.5 times less than what it was. I wonder what the reasoning behind this change is. I'm hoping they've decided to increase the amount of enemies that spawn at higher difficulties or increase the intelligence of the AI. Maybe they've nerfed the damage numbers and armor amounts on items and therefore need to reflect that in the enemy's health and damage. But right now, it's kind of all speculation. What do you think and what would you like to see? Moving on, there are flame decal vinyls, thank god. Now all fire base builds can represent. We can see here that more than 4 people can be in the social hub called the launch bay. In fact, up to 16 players can join you in this area. From here you can customize, personalize, take missions and contracts and more. Oh, and there is a robot dance animation, just so you know. It still doesn't beat the finger guns though. You can craft powerful masterwork items after unlocking a blueprint that represents it. The blueprints are permanent and not consumed when you make the item attached to that blueprint. So once you have the resources, you can build over and over again. Blueprints unlock after completing challenges related to them, like using a gun a particular amount of times, or an unlock from faction loyalty. Here we see a master light machine gun, the Cycle of Pain. It's a sledgehammer light machine gun, which is the type that has a slow rate of fire but higher damage. Its masterwork ability is that the rate of fire increases 10% after getting a weak point hit, stacking 10 times to, well, 100%. That means what was a slow, accurate, powerful shot is now a fast, accurate, and powerful shot. As long as you're actually accurate. There's no scoffing at the cycle of pain. With 100 Crimeric Alloy, 50 Crimeric Compound, 50 Weapon Parts, and 25 Masterwork Ember, you can craft one. As seen here, the inscriptions you get are randomized. The weapon produced ice damage, weapon ammo, and mag size, as well as the first skill having more speed. Now, if this is not to your liking, you can recraft until you get the modifiers you want, and that is the, well, general idea of crafting. It's really a way to supplement your build. Say you're going for a pure fire-based build, you 
may re-roll this until you get an increase to fire damage, then craft another masterwork with fire damage until you have a large boost between all of your items. Crafting is a great way to get gear to do the hardest content in the game in order to look for those legendary items. You can find the most crafting materials in free play, so if you have a full set of epics and aren't finding the masterworks you need to exponentially boost your power with their crazy strong abilities, crafting may be the way forward. In the background we can see another masterwork, Renewed Courage, which is a light machine gun as well, except this one is a Savage. The Savage has the fastest fire rate out of all the light machine guns. Its masterwork ability makes it so that if you fully empty your clip, your recoil will be reduced by 50% for 20 seconds and it stacks twice. So you get this gun to have no recoil if you unload two clips, which would be absolutely devastating during boss fights when their guard drops, like when the tyrant's sack bursts. Here we see another masterwork item being crafted, Artinius Gambit, also a light machine gun. However, it's the relentless model, a balance between the other two. When reloading, it detonates combo explosions in the immediate area. That means if an enemy is primed, reloading your gun will set them off. That is a huge deal because now, with this gun, you don't need to have a detonator ability to, well, combo. We can see here just from these three masterwork guns that there is a lot of potential builds to play around with. On this screen we see the challenges section, specifically a monthly trial to complete the Path of Glory challenge before the month is over. The Path of Glory challenge has you completing 30 daily trials and 10 weeklies. It rewards you with 100 masterwork ember which is needed to craft masterwork items. Most seem to take about 25 to craft, so that's 4 masterwork items right there. Here we see an example daily trial that has you simply completing the Heart of Rage Stronghold. Note that trials will get you coin, which is a good way to get vanity items in the game. Here's a board you can access your contracts from, on which we see a threat contract from the Sentinels that offers up 3 rare items for its completion, but that doesn't take into account all the bosses you'll probably have to fight and the items you get from them. There will be many more based on your reputation level with the factions they're associated with. Completing them gets you higher reputation and even unlocks crafting blueprints. Coin is also an offer, further increasing the amount of vanity items that you can purchase. Here we see a legendary contract. Hazard Pay. It's a high risk, high reward situation, and we have seen the devs play through one before, wherein they had to fight three Ash Titans in one section. These won't be easy. Contracts are randomly generated though, so taking the same contract will be different in its objectives and the enemies that spawn. Taking a look at the legendary contract Disaster Protocol, they seem to have run into an elite Fury, which has a powerful shield that, if not taken down, will give the Fury an ability to retreat into the void and nuke down your team with dark energy. At the end, they have to face an ancient Ash Titan, one of the more powerful enemies in the game. Doing contracts will be a way to change up the game with their randomly generated objectives and will be a lot quicker than strongholds. Next, the video talks about how there's still much more to come in Anthem between guilds and world changing events, but the most ambitious, they say, is cataclysms. Cataclysms are time limited world events. These events change the weather of the world for everyone, add dangerous enemies and give you new mysteries to solve. The devs have already demonstrated they can change the world globally for everyone whenever they want, and these events will have people scrambling into free play to complete them for unique and powerful rewards. I personally am excited for the full game, I didn't get a chance to try crafting and I feel like the ultimate loot chase will have me coming back for more between the dailies, weeklies and monthlies and all the different ways to play. I really hope the difficulty isn't scaled down because honestly, we kind of found hard to be a little too easy at times. I'm interested in how they'll build the guilds and I really hope there isn't a player limit as I have thousands of people on my discord ready to jump in and go. World events bring an interesting twist to the gameplay loop of Anthem and I can't wait until they tell us more soon. So that's it guys, congratulations to our two winners of the digital copies of Anthem, Owen and Daniel. See more on my Twitter. I'll be starting a brand new competition soon, so not all hope is lost for the rest of you. Thank you so much to my supporters and those who went the little extra mile with the Patreon, you'll be listening at the end of this video. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe guys, it really does help a small channel like mine immeasurably as YouTube algorithms favour interactive videos. Thank you again and I'll be back very soon with more.